Hello, my name is Michael Whitmire. I'm a salsa, I am a salsa instructor here in Houston, Texas, and I've been uh, selected to uh, teach you guys the choreography and to create choreography for a flash mob uh, that will be occurring on November 9th. Uh, I'm basically going to operate on the assumption that for the most part, when this video is being watched uh, by the participants, that most of you were actually in attendance at the first practice on October 23rd, or that you will have already seen the video, and you're mainly coming to watch the video just to give you a chance to walk through the steps again uh, that uh, I've already put on to uh, a written description on a uh, piece of paper for you, uh, and that you should have received by email as well. So, what I will do for this video is I will uh, step through the first two and a half minutes of the routine uh, with the music for you, and then after that, I will go through an explanation of what steps we did, uh, give a deeper exp explanation of the steps for any of you who need that. Uh, but basically, like I said, I will just go ahead and start off with the routine, and then afterwards, I will provide a more detailed explanation of what will be happening. Place. 
uh, where we just basically, the, there's going to be a small portion of you uh, will be selected to just go ahead and do uh, the introduction and the first uh, walkthrough of the routine. And then after we finish that, we're counting it in with another 10 second uh, opportunity for the rest of the group to come in. And at that point, everybody in the flash mob will do that four sequence of the routine. Uh, when I did that, I came down on my knee. That's after we've done the second run through of the core sequence. Everybody's going to go down on their knee, and that will allow the people who are sitting in the audience, um, if their view has been blocked by people who are standing, to then view a section of uh, couples who will, be who will be partner dancing on stage. Um, and then after that sequence, after the people who are doing the partner dancing do that, uh, I will count us in like five, six, seven, go. And while I'm saying the five, six, seven, I want you rising off your knee and getting ready to do the final uh, sequence, uh, that same core sequence, we'll run through it one last time, and then I'll finish the song, and we all do a hey at the end of that. So, uh, to break down exactly what the steps we're going to be doing, um, again, this is based on salsa music. Uh, the song that we're using is Micaela by a group called Sonora Carousellas out of Colombia. Uh, the sheet that I gave you with the, with the written description of the routine has the name of the song and the name of the salsa group on there. If for whatever reason you don't have that sheet of paper, uh, the video uh, description should also list the name of the song and the name of the uh, musical group so that you can purchase the song off of iTunes or Amazon or wherever you'd like to purchase uh, uh, MP3s. Uh, and then you can download a copy of the music, uh, purchase it, and listen to it as much as you like. And so, so you get a feel for the rhythm, uh, use, uh, get yourself used to stepping through uh, the beats, stepping through your steps to the beat of the music. Um, salsa music, the way the salsa dance is, uh, is we step on six steps out of each eight beat sequence. And so the, music, the dancer's measure is based on a set, a rotating cycle of eight beats that's going to repeat itself over and over through the music. And so if we think about the music in those eight beats, the dancers are going to be stepping on the first three beats, taking a pause or slowing down on the fourth beat, stepping on the next three, taking another pause, and then starting over again. The typical sequence, how we count that, how we construct that, is thinking about it as an eight beat cycle, and then I'm going to count one, two, three. Those are the first three steps we're taking. I'll be silent on the fourth beat, then I'll say five, six, seven. We silent on the eighth beat, and we start over again. So that one, two, three, five, six, seven method is very standard for counting through the salsa rhythm. Some people will also say quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, with the quick, quick being the one, two, the slow, reflecting the third beat and the fourth beat. And starting again, quick, quick, which would be the fifth beat and the sixth beat, slow, the seventh beat. So quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. It's the exact same thing as one, two, three, five, six, seven, pause, and starting over again. So that will be the method for explaining how we step through the different uh, variations of the salsa basic that we're going to be using in this routine. The only variation that we're going to do on that is with a hip roll. Uh, and I'm going to, we're going to move on the down beats, so every other beat. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little more deal, detail when we get there. But again, most of these first few moves that I'm going to demonstrate for you are based on the one, two, three, five, six, seven concept. Uh, the first step I'm going to do is just a regular salsa basic. And that is all that is, is we're going to always be starting with our left foot coming forward, except for the, the last exception I'll explain later. But all the dancers in this routine, we're going to start with our left foot going forward on the first beat. And so what we'll, it will look like is one, two, three, five, six, seven. I'll do that from the side. So we're always going to be returning to our center. Starting with the left foot going forward, a nice comfortable size. My weight evenly distributed between my feet. My right foot is going to come up and down in place. Then my left foot comes back to the center. The first part of that again is one, two, three. Then we'll repeat back to the back, starting with our right foot going back. Five, up and down in place for six, back together for seven. Again, returning to our seven. So putting those together is one, two, three, five, six, seven. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. If you want to see that from the back, it, it now is one, two, three, 
All we're doing is we're going to rotate 360 degrees, but taking our salsa steps. What that's going to look like is that very simple. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And we also have the steps over to the left, the exact same thing. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So, as you can see, the key on that is to take your, the same rhythm, the quick, quick, slow, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Three steps should get you 180 degrees. The next three steps should get you all the way around. To see that from reverse, the steps circle to the right is going to be one, two, three, five, six, seven. That's going to be the clockwise turn. And now we have the steps circle to the left, counterclockwise. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And so again, in terms of the terminology that we're using for this routine, that would be what I'm calling a step circle right or a step circle left. Uh, the last variation that we have is a hip roll. And so now this is also where we're going to change that counting sequence that I've talked about before. We've been using the one, two, three, five, six, seven, the quick, quick, slow, the quick, quick, slow. This time we're going to move on the downbeat, the odd beats of the music. So this, this sequence is going to take two full eight count measures. Uh, and what it's going to look like is, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it and then explain it will be a little more clear. It's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a full 360 degrees. I'm going to count at half time like that. Uh, if you're particular about wanting to count the beats of the music, that's going to be one, three, five, seven. One, three, five, seven. If we think about two eight counts that way. But the easiest way to probably think about uh, making sure we're on time and together, coordinated with that sequence, is just to count to eight, half time, and that will get us around. And this is the same thing to the left side. So we're going to have a hip roll to the right, a hip roll to the left. The mechanics of how I want that to work is I, I want our hips to actually make a full circle rotation with each step. So we're kind of, we see it from the side, I want to kind of send my back side to the back. And allow that to lift my foot, a little small circle, circle, circle. So each time I'm circling around, I'm allowing my hip to lift my foot and then taking that step. And the other foot remains pivoted in a spot because that's going to be uh, at the center of where we're going around. Same thing if we're going to our left or counterclockwise. My left foot becomes my pivot foot and I follow that same pattern of allowing my hip to guide that movement. What I'd also like for this, that, this part of the movement is for us to keep our arms up like this if we're going to our right, and up like this if we're going to our left. And the second time through that we do that sequence, I want us to try to shimmy our shoulders a little bit, try to keep the shoulders, the arms, the hands, just depending on your capability. I don't want it to be too much in the body, uh, but I want this to be rolling and the shoulder to be shimmy if possible. So to demonstrate the hip roll to the right and the hip roll to the left. I'll do them back to back because that's how they're going to be in the sequence. Hip roll right and hip roll left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, that's just the basic sequence. And you can kind of add some shoulder shimmies and things of that nature in there. All right, so those are the basic steps that we're going to be using in the sequence. As you'll see from the sheet, uh, as we get started in the music, uh, we have that 10 seconds where we just basically, the people in that first group, you can put your hands on your hips like this or like this and just allow your body to just kind of move with the music during those first 10 seconds. When the columns and the percussion come in, uh, then we're going to take three regular basics, just going forward and back, and then we start the core sequence, uh, which starts off with the side-to-side -side movement. When we, each time we start the core sequence, I want a group to say, hey, as we're taking our steps. So again, the core sequence starts with the side-to-side -side movement, and we're going to say, hey, at the start of that. So again, just the first three side-to-side -side basics of the core sequence will look like this. Hey! into it, and the three side-to-side -side basics, and then the dip basic, and then we're going to get 
continue with that sequence. Uh, at the end of the course sequence, we have four shouts. Uh, and again, those four shouts are going to be, uh, take four in counts, which is approximately 10 seconds, and that will allow the next group of people to get up to the dance floor. So like I said, we're going to start with a 10 second break. Our 10 second introduction that allows the first group of dancers, the smaller section, to get to your places and be ready to start with the sequence. As you're counting through, once you finish that sequence, you're counting one, two, three, four. The rest of the group should be coming to going to your spots, uh, and that count will allow you to understand where we're on the music if you haven't been kind of concentrating as you're trying to get out of your seat, get through the aisle, get to where you need to get to for your part of the sequence. Everybody else will be counting so that everybody can be on the same page about where we are within the music and where we are within the routine. And then once we finish counting to four, we repeat that four sequence. Um, after the second time, again, that second part of the repetition of the four sequence involves everybody. Um, as we count through four, on that fourth uh, count, for the regular basic at the end of that, that's when you go down to your knee, again, like I said, so that you can be out of the, the uh, line of eyesight for the people who are sitting in the, in the seats and they can see the dancers on stage. Once we're finished with the dance on stage, we'll say something like five, six, seven, go. During that time, we should be raising up your seats, ready to do the final sequence. Um, once we go through the, the repetition, that will be the third time when we do the core sequence. That will get us to the end of the song. We will not need to count through the four bases at the very end. Once we just get through that last set of hip rolls, I just want everybody to say, hey, and we're happy that the routine is over, and then we're going back to our seats. So, it should be very fun. I want you to really enjoy it. Uh, again, the more you listen to the music, the more you get comfortable with the rhythm, the easier it will be to take those steps. Uh, we're supposed to have uh, two more practices. We had a practice on October 23rd. We scheduled a uh, group practice for November 2nd and also November 5th, uh, the same week of the performance that will be happening on November 9th uh, during the event. Uh, we'll be getting emails between now and then so we know exactly when we'll be uh, uh, not necessarily interrupting, but we'll be kind of taking our little part in the event to do our flash mob uh, performance. So stay in touch with the emails about that. If any of the emails change any aspects of how we're moving from one place to the other, uh, other than this video, then uh, the, the emails will take precedence. Uh, but just be on the lookout for that. Uh, again, just go through your sheet, make sure to listen to the music, and watch walk through these steps. Feel free to uh, rewind or kind of replay any parts of this video uh, as you need to, just to kind of refresh your memory about what the sequence is supposed to be, and that should make the, the final event uh, a very fun occurrence. If you have any other questions, uh, the email that you receive should have my email address on there, also my uh, cell number if you need to contact me about that. Uh, otherwise, uh, I believe that pretty much explains the general gist of how we like the routine to work. I will give more details during the actual practice sessions, but I didn't want you to have this video uh, so when you're on your own or when you're not able to make all the practice sessions, this gives you an extra chance to understand what's going on and to be able to participate in what should be a very fun event. All right, thank you. Have a good time.